Greetings. It is a joy for me to be with you here at this Living Word Christian Church Life Group. Life, as you I'm sure already know, stands for living in faith every day. Living in faith every day. Faith isn't something we just turn on once in a while when we need to believe God or trust God for something. Faith isn't something that we use when we get born again. We know our Bible says, for by grace are you saved through faith. And, and we don't just pray a prayer of faith and then and then we're done with it. Our Bible says the just shall live by faith. I was just reading it a short time ago in Hebrews 10, verse 38. It's also found in Habakkuk chapter 2, Romans chapter 1, Galatians chapter 3. And there in Hebrews chapter 10, four times in the Bible, the just shall live by faith. Not the just shall pray a prayer of faith. <coughs> there is a prayer of faith. But the just shall live by faith. Live by faith. And faith is something that we, we live by uh, and live in every day. So uh, greetings uh, again. My name is Mark Clements. I pastor Living Word Christian Church, and you're at one of our church's life groups, our home fellowship groups. I want to publicly say thank you to our leaders, to those of, uh, those of you who are there in person, you're meeting at their home. Uh, those of you who are, who are viewing this online, uh, you're, you're, they're streaming from their home, uh, and, and they're a valuable asset to our church and a very important part of, of what we do is, as outreach in small groups to our church's congregation and to others. So thank you for joining us. I want you to take your Bible and open it up to 2 Peter chapter 1. 2 Peter chapter 1, for the next oh, 20 minutes or so, we're going to be uh, looking into this particular chapter. I'll give you a moment to find it right now, and then we'll begin. It's a great chapter, as every chapter in the Bible is, uh, one that I, I dearly love. If you haven't spent much time in it, you'll notice right away the depth of instruction that comes through this. Now, I often look at, and I want you to, to follow me, to verse 12. It says, Wherefore, I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, though you do already know them, and are established in the present truth. Yea, I think it appropriate, I think it proper, as long as I am in this body, and he calls it a tabernacle, to stir you up by putting you in remembrance, knowing this, that shortly I must put off this my tabernacle, even as our Lord Jesus Christ has shown me. Moreover, I will endeavor that you may be able, after my decease, after my death, that you may be able to have these things always in your remembrance. Now, what we read here is, is the final words. Uh, we don't know what exactly what Peter's last words were. Uh, we know he was crucified on a cross. Uh, we know historically that it was hung upside down. He didn't feel worthy to be crucified in the same manner as his Savior and Lord. He requested he be, he, uh, uh, be crucified upside down. He was. He was one of the martyrs, one of the... One of the uh, uh, original apostles and disciples that were martyred for their faith, who gave up their life. I want to remind you right now of Re Revelation chapter 12 and verse 12 that says, we love our lives not unto death. Uh, if, if our life is, is required of us in performance of our service and duties and responsibilities as a Christian, as a believer, so be it. We depart and be with Christ, which is far better. Uh, but, but we don't recoil from anything from any trial, any test, any persecution, any affliction, any threat, we recoil from nothing, uh, even death. And, and Peter was going to die, and he knew it. The Lord had showed it to him, and, and he, said, he said, now, I want to put you in remembrance of these things before I go. Now, that's important to us. It's critical to us because the last words, people's last words, are so vitally important many times. We, uh, we remember the last words of Jesus. And normally around Easter and that, that time of year we celebrate his resurrection, we talk about the fact that he was on the earth for 40 days. And we have just a little bit of what Jesus spoke and what he said and what he emphasized there toward the end uh, of his earthly life. And those things that he said, Matthew 28, in Mark chapter 16, in Luke chapter 24, in John uh, 21, 
we see 20 and 21 actually in John, uh, and then just a, a few words at the beginning of the book of Acts. And we see the last things that Jesus said were that he emphasized certain things. He emphasized the, the Great Commission, go, now you go, you go. Uh, I've been given, this is what he said at the end of Matthew, I've been given all power and all authority in heaven and earth, now you go. So you go in my name, he said in, in Mark, go in my name uh, and proclaim the good news, proclaim the gospel to everyone everywhere, lay hands on the sick, cast out devils, and so on and so on. But when we look back to the book of John, we look back to John, we see, we see Jesus and we see Peter walking together. Uh, and, and we see them talking together. And we see uh, that Jesus says to Peter, uh, feed my sheep. And then he says to Peter, feed my lambs. And then he says to Peter, tend my flock. Feed my sheep, feed my lambs, and tend my flock. And that starts in verse 15 and then goes down to verse 17. And then he says in verse 19, follow me. And of course, we all know that he Peter immediately started talking about John, but Jesus said, if it's my will that he lives till I return, what is that to you? You follow me. Now, we see Peter throughout the Gospels. We see him mentioned in every Gospel, and we see quite often Peter putting his foot in his mouth. We see Peter immature. We see Peter lacking understanding. We see all these things about Peter at the initial part of his life. Now, he's only been a believer in Christ. He's only been a follower of Jesus. He's only been a disciple about three years at this time. And he's still flubbing up, for lack of better terminology. He's still making mistakes. He's still concerned about other people. He's still got his eyes on John. And what's going to happen? There was kind of a silent competition between the two of them. Uh, Peter's the one who took Jesus and said, after Jesus had described his crucifixion, and Peter took him aside and said, we will never let that happen to you. And, and, and Jesus looked at him and said, get behind me, Satan. Peter was the one that stepped out of the boat to walk on the water and then started to sink when he took his eyes off Jesus. He started looking at the wind of the waves. Matthew 14 began to sink. And Jesus had to walk up and say, why did you doubt, O ye of little faith? Picked him back up. It was Peter who boldly proclaimed to Jesus, these other people, they might all run away, but I will never leave you. I would never deny you. And Jesus looked at him and said, Peter, you'll deny me three times before the sun comes up tomorrow morning. And he did. And he did. And he, he, uh, he went out and wept bitterly. But when we turn from what happened here in John, when he was still, even after the Lord's crucifixion and resurrection, and he'd seen him and talked to him and received some instruction, he's still thinking about other people. We page ahead to 1 Peter and then especially 2 Peter. This is 36 years later. 36 years later. And Peter has grown up. And that's one of the one of the focal points of what he's talking about right here. And, and really the thrust of what I want to share with you today. There's a doctrine in the Bible that teaches us that every one of us as a Christian, as a child of God, as a student of God's Word, should grow, should develop, should not remain stagnant, should not remain the same. And I want to encourage you, it doesn't matter if you were born again last week or within the last hour. If you were born again, 50 or 60 years ago, or 40 or 30 or 20, or, or 15 or 80, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how long you've been walking with the Lord. You should be continuing to grow. You should be continuing to increase in faith, in hope, in love, in knowledge, in wisdom, in perseverance, in productivity, in fruitfulness as a Christian. You and I should never remain the same lest we fall backward and become lukewarm. We should always be pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day, still praying while I'm onward bound. Lord, plant my feet on 
higher ground, a higher plane that I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. That's a, the words of the old hymn. Not, I'm happy where I'm at. Uh, I'm content with, with, hey, I'm saved. I'm a church member. Uh, I, I, I do a little bit in the ministry. I read a chapter every day in my Bible. I pray. Hey, I'm good. No, we should always be, not necessarily striving with a discontentment about our relationship with God, but a knowledge, an inner knowledge that there are things we need to add. There are things we need to do more of. There are things we need to increase in our lives. Now, if you look at this very same book, Second Peter, I'm back to Second Peter now. If you look at the last verse, the very last verse of Second Peter is, but grow. But do what? But grow. Now, is this written to brand new Christians? No, this is the last time Peter will ever communicate. Now, we see things that Peter communicated in the Gospels. Isn't Peter a wonderful, wonderful figure of a gospel minister? Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2, what happens? The Holy Spirit falls on the day of Pentecost, and they're all filled with the Holy Ghost. And who stands up and preaches? Peter. Peter stands up and says, men and brethren, these are not drunk as you suppose. Acts chapter 2. Seeing it's only the third hour of the day, but this is that spoken by the prophet Joel. Maybe your life group leaders could get you to open your Bibles and pause this and take a couple minutes there in, 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 in Acts chapter 2. This is what was spoken by the prophet Joel, that it shall come to pass in the last days that my spirit shall be poured out upon all men. And that's Peter. And Peter's standing up preaching. Peter and John are, 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 are walking through the gate, Acts chapter 3, and they see a lame man. And, and, and Peter says, look at me, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Grabs him by the arm, rise up and walk. And, and the man's totally healed, walks into the church house, walking, leaping, and praising God. Hallelujah. Peter, along with John, were arrested a couple chapters later, and they were beaten and whipped and threatened. And, and it says they went back and reported to their own company what had happened. And they prayed and said, Lord, grant unto us that with boldness we may speak your word. And that was Peter. That was Peter. Peter, it says, was at Cornelius's house in Acts chapter 10 when the Holy Spirit was poured out on the Gentiles. He went back in chapter 11 and reported that back to the church at Jerusalem, it was Peter in, 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 in the book of Acts that was arrested, that was arrested, put in jail. And the angel came in and released him and led him out and, 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 and he went free. Peter, uh, many theologians give him the credit for writing the gospel of Mark. It's not written Peter, but Mark was, was, was Peter's uh, nephew. And, and, and many people believe that Mark, in penning the gospel, received his firsthand information uh, from, from Peter. We know for sure that Peter wrote two letters. And 1 Peter, of course, what tremendous truth you have in 1 Peter. That's just prior to the book that we're looking at. And in 1 Peter, uh, great, outstanding teaching all the way through. Chapter 1 on being born again. Chapter 2 on Christ's suffering, his example to us. Uh, all chapter 3, chapter 4, chapter 5. Just just a tremendous, but we... but. But not until we get here to 2 Peter do we have the final inclusion from the Apostle Peter. Do we have just the final installment of his writing of Scripture? And the last things that he's saying here to us, focus on and encourage growth. Again, that last verse, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 18. But do what? But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to Him be glory both now and forever. Amen. And again, this is not written to Sunday school kids. This is not written to the youth group. Uh, fine if you are a Sunday school age child. Fine if you are a child or a young person. Fine if you're a teenager or a young adult. Wonderful. But if you're in middle age or even a little past like I am, or if you're in your golden years, you're in your 90s, your 80s, you're over 100, you're in your 70s or 60s, this is still written to you. 
If you're in your 30s or 40s or 50s and you've been born again since you were a child, this verse is still for you. This verse is for you. Grow in grace. Every one of us, this is written to, continually grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, continue to grow in your knowledge of him and continue to grow in grace. Now, I'm going to turn back to 2 Timothy. When I said that just a moment ago, uh, uh, this, verse, this verse just jumped out and, and came to mind. And it says in verse 14, 2 Timothy 3, verse 14, continue. That means don't ever give up on. Continue in the things which you have learned and the things you have been assured of, knowing of whom you've learned them and that from a child you've known the Holy Scriptures which are able to make you wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. So he doesn't ever say that, well, you know, at some point you're going to have read enough Bible. At some point, you know, after you memorize scriptures and meditate scriptures and read through the scriptures and have a daily reading plan and a year through the Bible reading plan and sit in enough church services on Sundays and Wednesdays and go to life groups and then read it for yourself devotionally. Uh, eventually you'll have read enough, heard enough, and you can kind of, you can kind of coast from then on. You don't find that doctrine anywhere in the Bible. That is not an appropriate Bible doctrine to take a stance on. Um, what the Bible teaches, on the other hand, is you need to grow. You need to continue. You need to increase. You don't need to stagnate. Uh, and, and you don't need to stop. So he says, continue in the things that you've learned and been assured of, knowing of whom you've learned them and that from a child you've known the Holy Scripture. So if you're one like me, you can turn back to Ephesians 4 with me right now. If you're one like me and, and you've been raised in church and you've been in Sunday school, I don't know how long I've been in Sunday school, at least since I was five. I remember my Sunday school teacher when I was in kindergarten my kindergarten Sunday school teacher, uh, and I ran into her at a conference a number of years ago, and we got to reacquaint and, and, and rejoice uh, that we're still walking with the Lord and, and serving Him and loving Him. Uh, so even if, you, even, if, even if that's the case, you continue, to, you continue to grow, and you continue to increase as well. Here in Ephesians chapter 4, it says in verse 11 that Jesus gave five gifts to the church to develop them. Five gifts he gave to the church to prepare them. Five gifts he gave to the church to disciple them. Five gifts he gave to the church to perfect them and equip them. Verse 11, it lists them, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastor, teachers. And then it says, for the developing of God's people, the saints. See, now, if our Bible says that God put pastor, teachers in the church to develop and perfect and equip his people. How is it that I hear, well, I'm a mature Christian now. I don't need a pastor anymore. I feel like I'm a strong Christian and I can do things on my own now. I don't need somebody holding my hand. When I don't read that anywhere in the Bible, when it's written to everyone in the same Bible, that you should continue in the things that you've learned and been assured of, that you should continue to grow in grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And here it says, he gave apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers for the developing of God's people to work in ministry, to edify the entire body of Christ until, until, here we go, until we all come to the unity of the faith and the full knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man under the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. I've never met anybody that I could measure up to Christ and say they are at the fullness of his stature. Have you? I've never met anyone who was at the stature of the fullness of Christ, fullness of love, fullness of faith, fullness of hope, fullness of perseverance, fullness of trust, fullness of mercy, fullness of grace, fullness in their prayer life, fullness in their perfect doctrine. I've never met that person. And so that means that person, that means all people, to me, uh, in, 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 in my experience, still 
need to be perfected, still need to be developed, still need to be equipped, still need to be uh, enlightened, still need to be taught, still need to be led, still need to be adjusted. Every one of us still needs that. Let's go on. Verse 14, that we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro, carried about by every wind of doctrine, by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. So we have it again there. Grow up into him. Over in Hebrews chapter 6, we have this list of the basic doctrines of Christ. And it says in Hebrews 6, 1, Therefore, leaving the basic principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on to perfection. You see it there again? Just because you're established in all of these basic doctrines, that, that doesn't settle the matter. Once you're settled in all those basic doctrines, then it says, let us go on. Let us go on. Let us go on. How far, Pastor? To perfection. Until we see heaven, until we stand and see our Savior face to face, the one who saved us by his grace, praise God, uh, until we leave this temporal existence behind and step into the eternal, we're not there yet. We're not there. Uh, I love Philippians chapter 3. I hope you do too. And it says in verse 13, I do not count myself to have apprehended. He, he says, I'm not there. I, I, I haven't arrived. I haven't got to the place where I can relax and stop growing. He says, I count myself not to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting what's behind and reaching to the things that are before me, I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Uh, and, and that's every one of us. That's every single one of us. We ought to be pressing towards the mark. All right, let's get back to Second Peter here then, and, and, and let's, let's, let's wrap up. I feel like all we've done is just get started. Maybe at next month's life group, we'll get a little bit, a little bit deeper. Peter says, Peter says, this is, my, this is going to be my last installment. The Lord's shown me that I'm going to be deceased, and I'm going to depart soon. So what's, what's he going to do? What's he going to do? He's going to stir them up by putting them in remembrance. That's what he says in verse 12 and 13. I'm going to put you in remembrance of all the things that I've taught you already so that after I depart, verse 15, you'll have these things in your remembrance. He said, I'm going to pound these things that I've taught you even deeper and deeper and deeper. And what are those things? What is he talking about? What's he talking about? He says in verse 9, he that lacks these things, there's that phrase again, he that lacks these things is blind, cannot see it far off, and has forgotten the things that he's been purged from uh, his old life. And, and, and so he, he says in verse 10, then rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. If you do these things, there's that phrase again, you shall never fall. And so what are these things he's talking about? For time's sake, I'm not going to be able to, to, to read verses 1 through 4. Maybe you can discuss it there uh, at that life group. Maybe we'll come back to it in a future month and talk about these things. But it's important to lay the foundation for Second Peter when, when he starts off there. And, and he, he, he talks about grace and peace being multiplied in verse 2. He talks about God's divine power giving us all things pertaining to life and godliness. How? Through the knowledge of him. And verse 4, whereby are given to us exceeding great and precious promises that by these you're partakers of the divine nature. Then he says in verse 5, so he's gotten us down through, you're a partaker of the divine nature. He's got us down through all things that pertain to life and godliness. He's got us down through grace and peace be multiplied to us through the knowledge of God. And then what does he say in verse 5? Here it is. This is it. Just, just blatant right out there. So we can't misunderstand it. We can't miss it. It says, and beside all of this, besides grace and peace and knowledge of God, besides all things pertaining to life and godliness, besides glory and virtue, besides exceeding great and precious promises, beside being partakers of the divine nature. Then he says this in verse five, and beside this, give all diligence to add to your faith. You see it there? You see it there? We're not to just sit back on our laurels and relax and say, well, you know, uh, I, maybe I haven't arrived, but I'm just almost there. I don't have to work so hard. I don't have to pray so much. I don't have to study so diligently. I don't have to meditate the word so often. I'm a strong Christian. I, I'm, I'm a powerful Christian. I'm an impactful Christian. Uh, and, and I think I'm a victorious Christian. I think I got the devil on the run and everything is good. 
and then and then without saying it and even without realizing it we kind of take our foot off the gas a little bit and 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 think okay we'll just coast for a while uh, no he he said and besides all this giving all diligence <clears throat> add to your faith and, and, and he's saying to them, add to your faith virtue and to your virtue knowledge and to your knowledge temperance and to temperance patience and patience godliness and to godliness brotherly kindness and to brotherly kindness charity or the God kind of love. And if these things be in you and abound, they'll make you so that you'll neither be barren or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Add to your faith. Add to your faith. Add to your faith, add to your love, add to your understanding, add to your repertoire of scriptures, add to your church attendance. Don't take away from it. Add to the generosity of your giving. Don't, don't shrink back from that. Add to increase and grow. Grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks for allowing me to come and be part of your life group tonight. God's richest and real blessing be upon each and every one of you. Amen.